Let us all rejoice in the Lord as we celebrate the feast day in honor of the Virgin Mary, at whose assumption the angels rejoice and praise the Son of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be shares of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with a moon beneath her feet, on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its head were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. The queen takes her place at your right hand in gold of Ophir. The queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. Hear, O daughter, and see, turn your ear, forget your people and your father's house. The queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. 
so shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. They are borne in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. Second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Mary is taken up to heaven. A chorus of angels exults. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Amen. 
whether it is out of pride or ignorance or self-deprecation, we have a twofold temptation when it leads to our mother. The first is to reduce her to a functionary that, like children, go to mom when we need something, but the moment that it is met, like, okay, I'm good, now go away. Hey, I need food, give me food, okay, now go away. I need the TV on, okay, it's on, now go away. And we can think the same, hey, blessed mother, I need help with X, Y, and Z, okay, I did it, good, go away. The, the common joke of, hey, mom, if you help me find a parking space, I promise I'll pray more, oh, never mind, I found it myself, talk to you later. The second temptation is to view our mother in an awe that leads us to inaction, that we are so enamored by what God has done to her and for her and through her that we in self-deprecation or pride or despair or what have you are like, how can I ever compare? How can I ever come close to what my mother has done, what God has done through her? And so like noticing the disparity between the two of us, I'm just not even going to try. But what's beautiful about our mother and what's beautiful about our gospel reading is that she isn't waiting on the sidelines for us to come to her. She is running towards us, bringing her son with her. She, in the visitation, has just been told by the archangel, you're the mother of God, yo, I'm paraphrasing, and the very first thing she seeks to do for love of Elizabeth and her family is run out to meet her. Even though it's a great distance across the hill country, even though it's three months of the last tenure of her pregnancy, even though doing so means, hey, she's going to wait hand and foot on Elizabeth, who's not the mother of God, who's not free of all sin, who isn't the greatest chief's fan like Mary's son is in her womb, for love of her. Mom rushes to her, brings her her son, and waits on her. That is what she wants to do for us. She is the loving mother who sees her children and comes running and wants to serve us and love us in all humility and most beautifully bring to us her son that through mom we may better know and love him. There's so many joys we could focus and meditate and pray upon today, so many theological and spiritual truths that are worthy of our attention and our meditation and our reflection and our study. But I think what mom wants us to do most, because God wants us to do most, is to approach her as mother not the functionary that we just ask to do a task and then go away, not the greatest human that's above us and will never approach. That's my mom who delights to know me and love me so much that I, her sinful child, she is rushing across the great distance to serve me, to help me, to love me, and to bring me her son that I may know and love him. So our invitation, this solemnity, let's talk to mom as mom. Bring to her our heart and know with certainty she loves us and she brings us her son to know and love him in perpetuity. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My brothers and sisters, trusting in the love and mercy of our Lord, let us unite our hearts and minds and bring forth to God these petitions. For the church, that her faithful may ever strive to listen to and follow the will of our Heavenly Father, that by the Spirit our faith, hope, and love may continue to grow, and we may better serve as his love to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Johnston, Father Justin, 
all leaders of our church and our world, that they may be consoled by the mercy of God, persevere in their ministry by his grace and strength, and be guided by the Spirit to humbly serve all people with the justice and love of the Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, those who are in need, and those who care for the sick, the suffering, and the needy, that they may turn to our Lord Jesus Christ as a source of strength, consolation, and hope, for he is with us always through our trials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, and for the repose of the soul of Robert Heinen, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may be presented worthily to our Lord Jesus Christ by our loving Mother, so as to receive our Lord's bountiful mercy, mercy and love and reside with him in heaven for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the profound gift of your mercy and love. Please help us by your grace and the intercession of your saints to return the gift of love to our neighbor and to you in all that we are and all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And because I forgot, may culpa. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord. 
wash away of my iniquities. And he cleanses me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven, as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim. Death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. us into the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain forever. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.